Drift Mobility Scooter, still no brakes, but now five times the power. In today's episode, I'm gonna show you how I did that. I got some deliveries that I needed to take the project forward. The first is the brushed DC motor controller that came from Motion Dynamics Australia and I've already wired it up. It's pretty simple. It came with a pretty nice set of instructions. I got the 50 amp model that takes a Hall effect throttle. Let me talk you through it. So I've pulled the motor off. It's only two bolts to do that, super convenient. And my first connections are to the voltage in and out. So I have two wires coming from the battery. They come into the negative and positive. And then I have the same two wires coming out to the motor. That's half of the connections done already. Now down the bottom, I have three wires for the Hall Effect throttle, which I ordered at the same time to make sure it was compatible. And then the only other switch is one that's designed for a key or on off toggle switch. And for now I've just shorted that and you can see the system turns on. There are some trim pots inside for adjusting different things such as the frequency. And I've already gone through the process of running the motor at low speed and adjusting it until the wine is gone. The only other thing I will need to adjust later on is the low battery safety cutoff. To do that, I need to run the motor for a while, use a multimeter to test the voltage and when it gets down to what I want my minimum to be, twist the adjustment until it cuts out and then it'll do so from that point onwards to save the batteries in future. Working perfectly. Time to mount it to the drift track. So I've mounted the new throttle and routed the cable out the back. It's very important to make sure it's not at the low points of the frame. Otherwise, if you bottom out, cable wire is destroyed and repairs needed. I've got my brace from the last episode. I've actually shortened the center piece to move it away from the terminals. Previously I had the battery switched position, so the terminals were on the outside, but this time I've got them on the inside. It was a little bit too close for comfort. So that's a safety modification. I'm planning to mount my speed controller directly on top here, but the problem is it'll then block the wing nuts that take off the battery clamp. So what I'm gonna do is get some carbon fiber to use as standoffs, then have some M4 screws that go through, and I'm gonna tap the thread into here. So that way I put this above, standoffs underneath, screw it down, it'll be held nice and firm, but I can still remove it if I need to take off this section. Job one, let's mount this on top and get it centered. Everything is wired up, time for a proper test drive. All right, so I've made some very minor modifications before starting out. First thing I've done is getting rid of the jumper wire and wired up a key to turn on the electronics. That's now live. I've got the cover on top, because as you can see, the road's a little bit wet out here. And apart from that, all I've done is done up the bolts properly tight on these foot pegs so they don't bend and flex so much. So I think we're ready to go. So the difference with the speed controller is I can now give it a tiny amount of throttle and control it, whereas before it was straight on like that. So I can actually get traction when I need to and when I don't want traction. Now my main problem is it's still not fast enough. The gearing's all wrong. So that one there would have been nice if I had more power because then I could have held the slide and it would have been a good drift. Well, it is underpowered and it does have an open diff, but apart from that, it went pretty well. Fortunately, that wasn't the only delivery I got. I got the parts I needed to get this thing moving. 
Now previously, I already had my brushless motor. I'd also got some chain, a chain breaker, and a secondhand sprocket to match the profile of the front sprocket that came with the motor. The most important thing that arrived was the rear axle assembly. So it consists of the rear axle, 20 millimeters solid, two bearings with pillow blocks that slide on to hold this to the frame, two of these mounting pieces that go in the middle, and then they're secured by a nut and they are to hold the brake rotor on one side and the sprocket on the other. Also came with these wheel hubs, which slide onto the narrower spline on the end, and there is a retaining nut for those. And then of course we have a wheel. I spent a lot of time looking at the pictures and the couple of measurements that were given on the online listing, and I agonized over what size to get. And fortunately I got it just right. And part of the reason for that is that I ordered it so it would be flexible. So for instance, these wheels here, the offset of the mounting plate is different. It's closer to one side than the other. And also this, I knew could go this way or this way. So that for it gave me lots of options. That would let me adjust the width of the wheel and to make sure it was gonna clear the frame. Here's one I prepared earlier and it fits perfectly. Now slight problem, the sprocket that came with the kit is completely different in pitch than the sprocket I already had that matches the motor. So I need to get this one off and this one on. But as you can see, the spacing and the amount of studs are different. This one has three, this one has four. The easiest fix is to drill the four stud pattern from this one onto this one. And to help me do that, I've already printed a custom part which sits inside here very snugly. And then the pocket bike sprocket fits very snugly on there and I can whack it on the drill press and drill the four holes to match. All right, so the sprocket is on, very happy with that. Next job is to remember which way the motor spins. I either need to make sure it's mounted facing this way or this way, and if I get that wrong, it'll spin the axle the wrong way. So you might be thinking, well, you can just put it into reverse, but you remember from the previous video that reverse is a lot slower than forward. So what we're gonna do is to fire up the motor and then draw with a Sharpie on the front, which way it spins. Should be clockwise, let's find out. So that was clockwise, I believe that was forward. Just to make sure, we'll put it in the other direction. Definitely slower. That was anti-clockwise, so I'm gonna mark right now clockwise as the forward direction. All right, so I know the motor has to face this way with the sprocket to the right, and that will keep the axle spinning forward. So the question is, is it gonna be mounted on this side or this side? And to work that out, I'm gonna start dummy fitting things into place. One thing you might notice about this is it's a little bit off center where the two mounts are, so I can spin it around either way as I need to to move the positioning of things. Hopefully everything's gonna find a nice spot. I do also have to clear the brake rotor and I have to clear the caliper that goes on this as well. Doesn't seem like enough room for that to fit there and there. All right, I think I finally got it. I had to switch the brake disc and the sprocket to the other side of the mount, and that moved them both wider on the central axle. I've got the axle roughly centered. There's grub screws in the pillow block bearings to lock them into place once it's correct. I've got one bolt in for the original mounts, so I know they're in the right position. As long as I can keep the motor as far that way as possible so the cord is nowhere near the spinning elements, then I think it'll work. Here's my caliper, it's quite bulky. I probably have to mount it on the underside or rear side of this just to keep it away from the motor and then I think everything will fit. Let's put on the rig cover and see how it looks. Here it is with the rig cover on and I have to say it fits beautifully. It's just perfect. Everything fits underneath. I think there should be room for the speed controller under here as well. 
Next job is to work out exactly how I'm gonna mount this motor. I've got mounting tabs on the top and there's also holes on the front surface of it. So I could mount it 90 degrees or from the top, maybe a combination of the two. But one thing's for sure, I'm gonna make it bolt into this frame and because I know it's gonna be hard to align it perfectly, I'll probably have some sort of slot so it can slide back and forth until I get the alignment spot on. Just too hard to fabricate it perfect first go. I think I might drill the other holes in the chassis so I can bolt in these two pillow blocks in their final position. I've had a little bit of a play and I think I know how I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna have the bracket facing this way. I will use shorter M8 nuts here to avoid any chance of a collision. And also this will sit a little bit further there. This also gets the wire far enough away from the brake. Planning to have my bracket coming on the bottom here and then bolting to the underside of there. And if I can, I'm gonna put in a hinge so that way I can use it as a tensioner. And the other thing I'm gonna do is make sure the mounting for that bracket is a slide bolt back and forth so I can get this alignment just right. All right, we're off to a great start. I found this mild steel strap. It's five mils thick, it's very strong. It's a great size to make the bracket for the motor out of. Even better, I found this high tensile nut and bolt pulled out of a car probably for this exact job on an alternator or air conditioner compressor or something like that. So I'm gonna to start to cut up the pieces and make one half of the bracket. Alright, so I've got my motor roughly in position and I've got my new chassis side motor bracket. It should come underneath and then slide on. Excellent. And the idea is to make a second half for the bracket that goes onto the bottom of the motor and then pivots on that bolt. And then if we get these other pieces into position, we should be able to have the range of motion we need to get the chain on, but then to tilt it up to tension the chain. The cord is out of the way of the brake caliper. Once these bolts are shortened for the sprocket, everything will be clear there. And so far, so good. We're looking great. It is night time and it is dark, but an exciting development. I have the motor sitting in place. I've got two of the bolts holding it to the bracket and it is supported by the bracket, even though the bracket isn't bolted to the car. You can see the range of motion that it has. So I can put on the chain and then tension it. I don't have a way to mechanically add that tension yet, but I've just thought of an idea. This is the bottom of the mount and the bracket here. I think if I have a nut here, a sleeve extended down here and a bolt coming out. As I wind the bolt in towards here, it's gonna push away from that and it's gonna give me exactly what I want. So that should be a pretty easy one to do. It's a little bit of plate down here and a bolt there and all finished. Just make sure I don't do it any lower than the disc brake. just finished probably the most tedious part of this entire bracket and that is joining up the two holes from side to side. This is going to have a single hole in the frame roughly in the middle of this and then you'll be able to slide it 
back and forth on the frame to change the alignment for the sprocket and the chain. So I'm gonna position everything as best as I can for now, drill the hole in the chassis. So in future, if I ever need to adjust anything, I should have a good eight to 10 mils either side of where I drill it now. So that should future proof it somewhat. All right, so I'm hoping to get the final assembly together for this. I've waited till the daytime so the camera can actually see what's going on. I'll talk you through the motor mount and let's see if we can get everything aligned and the motor running for the first time. Okay, so we have the bracket that bolts the chassis in place. There's two holes in the chassis. And then as you saw earlier, there's slots in this, which means it can slide back and forth to have some adjustment to line up perfectly with the sprocket, which is fixed in its width on the axle. Next, we have the motor and it is mounted to the plate that hinges on here. That sits like this. We have this high tensile bolt that acts as a pivot pin. Good. So as you can see, the motor can move back and forth. And then we have this bolt under here, which when we twist up, can push against this pad here and then force the motor back to tension the chain. Now, of course, the wing nuts are temporary. So you can see I have put in shorter bolts as planned for both of these, so there's less chance of them somehow fouling the motor. And now it simply should be a matter of tightening these to make sure they're in their final positions. I've measured either side of the axle to make sure it is centered, which means this is the final position for the sprocket. And now all I need to do is to slide this bracket. The sprockets are aligned. I could actually mesh them like gears right now. So without moving anything, I'm going to tighten up these bolts. So I've tightened up this to remove any side to side wiggle. It still can pivot and the sprocket is still perfectly aligned. So very happy so far. Let's get on the chain. Okay, so the chain does fit. However, I've decided I'm gonna add two more links just so I can move the two sprockets away from each other. I do have this bolt here that I can twist up to push the motor away and I've got a second locking bolt which is going to go on there so nothing vibrates loose. I'm going to add these two bits of chain and then we might reconnect the motor and see if we can get the rear axle spinning. All right let's see if the system works everything's in place I have reconnected the chain. I was sold a tool that only breaks chain doesn't connect it back together so I had to use pipe and a hammer to very carefully snap the pieces back on but I think it'll be fine I do have a master link on the way that'll make this job a lot lot easier but for now should be enough. Let's get it going. Okay, we can put the chain over the large sprocket. I can get it over the small sprocket on the motor. As we can see, it's far too loose. So let's use our tensioning bolt underneath and fix that problem. Motor can no longer move. Chain has tension. Everything's clear, everything's aligned. And I think we're ready to turn the motor on. I have mounted the battery semi-permanently. I do need to extend this and probably have something that goes over the edge just to stop that little bit of wiggle there. And you might note I've changed the configuration of how they're wired. So the two terminals that go to the motor are both on the same end. I'll probably move that to this end. The speed controller might go nicely somewhere around here. Reason being, putting it where it is on this side now, that's where the brake caliper is gonna be. All right, so I'm ready for the first test drive. I've got some very dodgy temporary things, the most of which is the fact that the brake is not connected. So what I'm gonna do is give it throttle uphill so gravity will stop me, which is great. I've got some things cable tied for now to keep them out of the way. Need a lot of refinement to come in future episodes. Only thing I've done is put in the final wiring for the foot throttle. It's got a nice waterproof automotive connector. It's extended long enough to reach down for where the final position will be. 
But for now, I'm just going to use my hand. All right, here goes nothing. Check out that understeer. All right, I have a flat bit up ahead with a heel to slow me down so I can give it some stick and we'll see how it goes. I'll try and sit in the final position. The neighbors won't think I'm weird at all. All right. See, if I lean forward, I can get some more weight over the front wheels and it actually turns. And of course, I have no brakes. And that seems to work pretty well. So that's going to wrap it up for this instalment. It's coming along, but there's still a long way to go. Next episode, brakes, mounting the electronics properly, doing wiring harnesses, and getting the chain perfectly aligned and reliable. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you then. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe, and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.